Tail Chaser, and you've heard of No Shave November. Well, this is Shave September. Not really. I'll probably let this grow out. It's just the beard was kind of getting long and unkempt. And I mean, just because I'm an alcoholic doesn't mean I have to look like one. Well, and, and no offense to anybody that's alcoholic. I know you're in recovery and you probably look fine. And also no offense to all my bros and, and lady bros in active alcoholism. I've been there and no, no offense to anyone. Just whatever. Bad joke. Anyways, today I want to talk about the correlation or rather lack thereof between alcohol and drug usage in response or in connection to consequences and what I mean by that is that I don't think I don't believe that there is any sort of moral relevancy to a person's drug or alcohol usage and what I mean by that is I don't think that like anyone who uses more drugs or more drinks more is that that is a straight trajectory of that they are a more immoral person now obvious that you know the the more drugs and the more booze you drink, the more likely you are to do immoral things, you know? But what I'm specifically talking about is people that are already alcoholics or addicts. You know, the, the person who can get wasted every day off of a 12-pack is not better than a person who needs, like, a whole handle of vodka to get wasted. Like, I, I don't... Again, maybe the amount can cause you to do worse things, but just in the usage itself, it's not, like, more morally wrong, at least I think. But I'm not even so much talking about that. What I'm talking about is the relevancy between how much you drink, how much you use, how frequently you do it, and how bad your consequences are. Now, again, this might sound very stupid. And I don't claim to be very smart. I also don't claim to be very stupid. But, like, what I mean by this is that there are so... There's nothing's fair in addiction or alcoholism. As one douchey teacher I knew used to say, the fair is in August... God, I hated that guy. But anyways, the, nothing's fair. Like, it's not fair that people have this affliction. And so that's step one. But it's, it's, there's no sort of reasoning or, I don't know, some sort of, like, drinking or drug use karma or any sort of justice in the sense to where, like, if you drink this much, like, your amount of drinking for every person, the more it goes up, the worse things happen. Like, it really doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen with physical effects, with mental effects, with, you know, the legal consequences, financial. I mean, all that, all of it's a crapshoot. Like, there are people, like one very stark example, which is like, there's Keith Richards, the guy from The Who, who like has done drugs all his life, heavily, till he was like 90s. Like, I'm pretty sure if he did a drug test, like his drugs would test positive for a little bit of pee. Like, He's, I think he's maybe still alive, but anyway, he's been doing fine for a while. And then there's people, you know, I hate to use like celebrities as example because they're not better than people, but like there's people like Mac Miller or Heath Ledger or Juice World or I don't know, I'm very old. Like, but there's, there's people like that that are, they die, you know, relatively young. And was their like usage worse than Keith Richards? Um, a more like personal example is that there was a, a friend of a friend who's the same age as me, like same sort of like demographics, everything. You know, we just, we weren't good buddies ourselves, but we were in the same sort of circle where I, I would even say I had a head start on him for like my real degenerate, like daily, like all day drinking. And I had, uh, I'm almost for sure had consumed more alcohol than him at a certain point. I was also a lot smaller than he was, but I consumed more alcohol him at a point. And while my liver wasn't doing super good, the enzymes were high, but I, I hadn't had any like real, real severe irreversible damage yet. He, on the other hand, had liver failure. Like some people are just, there's no time or telling about how bad it will affect you, like especially physically. You know, your genes are more prone to you know, kidneys going out or what it'll, even certain things like what it does to your skin. And I mean, you want to talk about like a more like dire example of the health stuff is just like overdose. I have known, you know, friends who had used opiates um, and some of them were more reckless than the others and some, you know, some OD and they get 
Narcan back or they somehow survive it and some don't and it has nothing to do again with the way they used how frequently they used I mean just the baseline is using enough like as an addict does but after after a certain point it it really does not matter you know and it's especially I would say with drugs and in that certain sector of drugs with like fentanyl you know I, I back in like you know, over a well over a decade ago, when I was more like about the drugs, I do have dual citizenship when it comes to substances. When I was more about the drugs, I had plenty of friends in my circle, friends that used opiates very heavily from Oxycontin and then going into heroin. And it was very sad. I noticed, like, just through the weird sort of vicarious following or seeing of their lives on like Facebook or something, that as like fentanyl got more prevalent, then they started dying more. And that has nothing to do with like what was changing in their own usage. They were still just as addicted and the tolerance was still going up at just as high. It's just, it's a sort of crapshoot to like when you'll OD or what will happen. You know, there's even, again, going to health stuff. There's even things like when you, like people that are more prone to seizures when they're going through alcohol withdrawals or benzo withdrawals. Like I... Not that I'm aware of, but I have been told that there's plenty of people who've had seizures and withdrawals and just didn't know it. I've had some extremely bad ones, seeing shadow people, the DTs, all that type of stuff. Never had a seizure. Is that because I drank better or in some certain way more responsibly? Absolutely not. It just, that's, I don't know, the way my, my body was. And this is not just for health stuff either. This is, again, for mental stuff. Like, I know plenty of people. I would say I'm in this category, especially for the past five years, that they just go straight crazy when they when they drink. Like, in a crazy in a sort of way of, like, very fatalistic and suicidal, like, right away. Like, when, for at least for me, like, over the times I, I've relapsed over, I would say, again, about the past five years, it is, like, a direct one-way flight to crazy town. I don't know how that occurred, and I know plenty of other people that drank just like me, and they kind of relapse, and they'll get away with it for a little while because theirs is not, like, is acutely terrible. It just affects people so differently. And one of the big things when you talk in terms of consequences that shows, again, this very stark example of, like, again, no correlation to consequences in your amount of use is drinking and driving. Like, I, I have one friend that moved to New York, and he's never gotten a DUI. He's completely an alcoholic. But he, he lives in New York City, so he doesn't need a car and he doesn't need to drive. And that has nothing to do with, like, the way he spun. Uh, he didn't move to New York so he could be an alcoholic and not get a DUI. In fact, some of the times he had come back to visit, he was drinking and driving. He didn't have a car. So it has nothing to do with, like, what his behaviors or the actions or parameters he set himself to. You see this a lot in the same way, like, in very small towns where... The whole police force is just Bill, and they're not going to pull you over if you're just drinking and driving. You know, it's a, a lot of small town stories like that where they just never got any sort of worry about DUI. And then they're in the city for a week, and they get a DUI, and they're actually like, what, I have to do a breathalyzer? Again, it has nothing to do with your the amount or frequency. You know, a lot of it is your circumstances. A lot of it, like... You know, and here's the other thing. I guess this is the the much better example for the DUI thing. So there are, unfortunately, people that kill people when they drink and drive. And I remember, I remember this very clearly. There was one, like, meeting I went to, like an AA meeting when I was, like, much, much younger. Kind of knew I was an alcoholic, but, like, still was, like, in college and stuff. I could kind of carry on that delusion, whatever. But... There was a guy who spoke at it where he he mentioned that he had, you know, got out of prison and he had killed someone when he was drinking and driving. And I remember thinking, whoa. And I had this sense of like, whoa, where I was like, not only is that, that that's fucked up. And I was in my brain, honestly, I was a little bit like, he's kind of fucked up. And I, I thought this because like there was this stupid sense in my mind where I was like, you know, I guess I've. I've I've drank and I drove and I've done it like at times which were really, really bad for how like inebriated I was. But I like, I would never kill anyone. 
like based off of nothing. It's kind of like where I I smoked cigarettes for a long time and I would make jokes like, yeah, here's another cancer stick. And what, I was very keenly aware that cancer was a probability with smoking cigarettes. Just this little thing in my back of my mind, I was like, yeah, but I'm not getting cancer based off of nothing. And, you know, when you talk about like those severe like accidents or when people are killed with drinking and driving, again, there's not a moral relevancy to it. And it has nothing, you know, obviously, obviously, the more times you drink and drive, the higher chances goes up, especially the more times you do it when you're like, in, like very incredibly intoxicated, but it just doesn't happen. It's so like, you don't want to say luck of the draw because it's awful, but whatever the reverse of that is, it just, you, it so happened that when you had passed out that one time you were like, had one eye open and like trying to drive, like the one eye open to see straight and yet you're like, you're so drunk, you have to like turn down the music so you can see better like that one time that had occurred someone was like just in all black walking across the street and hit them it has nothing to do with like the amount of like time you drank or how long you've been an alcoholic or anything like that like consequences you know i mean the one thing to take from this is that you know if your addiction and your drinking leads to these behaviors it, it's kind of like a russian roulette with every time you continue to drink and use now like the Imagine like, you know, in the revolver where you put one bullet in and there's like six slots. I, I, imagine that it's a giant, huge revolver and there's like a, sh a crazy amount of slots and you put one bullet in and you spin it and you click. You know, the more you do that, the more you're still spinning that revolver and clicking. You know, again, there's not a certain amount to where if you start drinking this much alcohol this much frequently, you are absolutely going to get in this sort of trouble. There's no guarantee of that. But uh, you run the risk of it more so of happening. But uh, the reason I even bring this topic up, the reason why I talk about this at times is because it, I, I think recognizing it is a good practice in humility. Because going back to that example I used about the, the guy where I was like, whoa, he killed someone. I, I'll, I'll admit, I used to say that, you know, I, I, I know when I was on the road, I could have killed someone. I know that. And I think I would say it with a sort of fake humility to it, if I'm, if I'm going to be candid. Like, again, still in that back of my mind, like, yeah, I would never do that. Or, I don't know, I'm better than that. Like, some stupid thing in my brain that was, like, protecting me from what the reality was. And the more that I recognized it, the more I could, in a sense, appreciate or at least acknowledge the severity of my actions or what I was doing. It's like, no, 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 dude. You weren't, like, there was no way you were, like, practicing any sort of, like, guidelines to your drinking or being careful in a certain way. Maybe you'd intend to, you know, and then it would go haywire once you got very, very drunk. Or, you know, a lot of times the way I would do drinking where I wouldn't like get blasted off work. I would kind of just drink all day, just like a morphine drip, just like keeping a buzz all day. But there were some times though, where I just hit it harder and I, there was no rhyme or reason to when I do that. And I'd be in some real danger of like, of doing something irreversible. And it had nothing to do with, I'm a better alcoholic than you are, or I'm more cautious in this completely risky and reckless behavior. It, it's nothing to do with that. It's just, some people are just super unfortunate in the consequences that, that occur during their drug use and their drinking, and some aren't. And unfortunately, some people, they need consequences to stop. And so they'll keep spinning that revolver and shooting their head and waiting for the bullet to come before they stop and sometimes it's too late or sometimes they've done something they can't live with and i i know now that i it is not because of the way i acted when i was drinking that i didn't get into some awful awful consequences that would be life-changing fatal and god forbid fatal for someone else it has nothing to do with the way that i was an alcoholic i just i was fortunate that for whatever reason, it just didn't occur to me. I mean, like I, again, I, I, I bring this, this sort of topic up or this idea up because it, it's a good way to, it's a good way to recognize and be sincere about remorse for your actions. And it's good ways to maybe like, even in some dark way, have some gratitude that, yeah, man, it had nothing to do with what I was doing. I was just lucky that this, this shit didn't occur. And, and not only that, like as if this is all over, this is a reason to keep going and to stay strong in sobriety and to keep trying recovery because I am not immune to any of those bad things happening. And if I, if I pick up again, 
I am just, I'm spinning that revolver and the worse it gets, the less of slots there are for, you know, empty sockets that a bullet could be put into. And, you know, the more danger you put yourself in and, you know, I just, I've talked about it before on an earlier sort of segment about like rock bottom. You don't need to wait for like some catastrophic consequence to happen to consider it your rock bottom to get better. I mean, you, it's miserable enough. Just go off of that. But anyway, that's, uh, that's my little spiel. Um, Comment below any thoughts, ideas, just comment. It's cool. I can interact back with you as long as I don't forget which YouTube account I'm on. And anyways, um, like, subscribe, hit the little bell, crack that thing, like the Liberty Bell, baby. God, I'm I'm still not good at this. But anyways, I appreciate you watching and be well. See ya.